Good morning, students. Let's take a look at our morning message. May 26th, 2020. Dear students, what was the Louisiana, that's a long word, Louisiana Purchase? Hmm. Who were Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea? Hmm. Or maybe Sacagawea? Hmm. Let's reread that, okay? Because that's a bit long. What was the Louisiana Purchase? Okay, I'm remembering something about some land that Jefferson bought <clears throat> for the United States. Who were Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea? Mrs. Kilmer. But guess what? Today I have for you a really fun book all about this. But your brains are awake now, so I bet you're ready to soak up information about the Louisiana Purchase and Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea. Here we go. This book is called Lewis and Clark, A Prairie Dog for the President. And on the front, I see two explorers and there's a smiling little prairie dog. And there's a blurb on the back of the book. What this book is about. Lewis and Clark, A Prairie Dog for the President. Lewis and Clark explore the American West. What happens when they meet a prairie dog? So a prairie dog, I know it's an animal that's not a dog. It's called a prairie dog though. And the prairie is like the flat, flat grasslands. Here we go. This is by Shirley Ray Redmond, illustrated by John Manders. Oh, and there's a cute teeny tiny picture of a prairie dog, I don't know, maybe eating a piece of apple. Lewis and Clark, a prairie dog for the president. Oh, and there are two portraits, two drawings of Lewis and Clark. So let's see, Lewis has kind of got brown hair, brown eyes. Clark has more reddish hair and blue eyes. By Shirley Ray Redmond, illustrated by John Manders, Random House, New York. And there I see, I think that must be Thomas Jefferson. In 1803, Thomas Jefferson was the president of the United States. The country was still new. It was also very big. It was so big, no one had ever explored it all. President Jefferson wondered how long it would take to reach the Pacific Ocean. He wondered what the land was like along the way. So it's 1803. Well, I've got to stop and think. So I think this book is starting maybe after they already have the Louisiana Purchase because it says that the country was very big and it hadn't been explored and how long it would take to get all the way to the Pacific Ocean. So that means it must have happened. This is taking place after Jefferson bought the land. The president wrote to his friend, Meriwether Lewis. Lewis was a soldier. He wanted to be an explorer. Lewis's buddy, William Clark, wanted to be an explorer too. Lewis and Clark went to see the president. I need someone to explore the West, said the president. We'll do it, said Lewis and Clark. The president told Lewis and Clark to make maps and explore rivers. He told them to collect plants and draw wild animals. Most important, he told them to send presents. And there he's waving from the front steps of the White House. Lewis and Clark needed helpers for their journey. They took soldiers, scouts, and boatmen. Lewis even took his dog. It was a long trip. 
one of the scouts brought his wife, Sacagawea. Sacagawea was a big help. She picked nuts and berries. She cooked meat and stew. She talked and traded with the Indians they met on the way. Out west, Lewis and Clark made maps. They explored rivers. They collected plants. Oh, he's got his notebook out taking notes. So you can see their map making tools, exploring a river and they're taking notes on some new plants. They saw animals they had never seen before. They saw buffalo. They saw grizzly bears. They saw jack rabbits with long ears. They drew pictures of the animals. So there's close up buffalo. And there's a grizzly bear. And there's the jackrabbit running off the page. They tried to catch some of the animals to send to the president, but the buffalo were too big. The grizzly bears were too dangerous. And the jackrabbits were too fast. The president will think we've forgotten him. They worried. Well, because Jefferson did say to send back some presents. One day, Lewis and Clark came to a prairie. The ground was filled with holes. A little animal sat by each hole. What are those? asked Lewis. Just then, a hawk flew overhead. The little animals barked. And then they dived into their holes. And you can even see the little action. It's like poof, like a poof of dust as each little dog, prairie dog is diving back into their holes when they see a predator. And they warmed each other with a bark. Let's catch one of those rascals, Clark said. They are small enough to send to the president. The soldiers took shovels and picks. They dug and dug, but the little animals were too fast. So these guys are fast too. Let's flood them out, Lewis said. The men carried water from the river. Lewis poured the water into a hole. Clark and the soldiers waited beside the other holes. Oh, I feel a little bit bad for the prairie dogs. There they're pouring water in the holes and there's a little prairie dog hiding in a hole, but the, it's filling up with water. From the water going in the other holes, it's filling up the water there. I wonder if they'll get them out. They waited and waited and waited. <gasps> then one of the animals popped up. I've got it, said Clark. Ooh, that prairie dog looks a little bit grumpy. Clark put the animal in a cage. I wonder what it is, he said. Lewis laughed. It's a wet rodent. You can call it a ground rat. No, said Clark. It looks like a squirrel. I'll call it a barking squirrel. Squirrels don't bark, said a soldier. Dogs bark. We should call it a prairie dog. That's it, Lewis and Clark agreed. <laughs> so, not a ground rat, not a barking squirrel. They decided to call it a prairie dog. Lewis and Clark picked a scout to take the prairie dog to the president. Clark also gave the scout some birds to take. They were called magpies. Lewis gave the scout a letter for the president. He gave him plants that he had collected. The soldiers gave him buffalo skins and deer horns. Have a nice trip, said Lewis and Clark. Oh, <laughs> the scout looks weighed down with the burden of so many things that he's supposed to take to the president. And it's funny, it says that 
they had found magpies, I'm making a connection to the little magpie pet that was in the Thomas Jefferson Feast book, right? Remember his little pet magpie called Dick, right? The scout and the animals rode a barge down the river. A barge is a big flat boat because uh, it can be flat because it's not really rough on the river and it can carry a lot of stuff. So they rode a barge down the river. They boarded a big ship in New Orleans. New Orleans was a big city at the mouth of the Mississippi River. The ship sailed around Florida, then it sailed north to Baltimore, Maryland. Finally, the ship landed in Baltimore. The scout put the animals and the other presents into the back of a wagon. He paid the driver to take everything to President Jefferson in Washington, D.C. Wow, here's a cool map, and you can see the detail. So he must have gone down the Mississippi River to the mouth. That means the opening of the river into, like, the ocean. There's New Orleans. Then they got on a ship, and the ship sailed around Florida and up past where we live and then up probably into the Chesapeake Bay to go up to Baltimore, which is a little bit near us, a little up north. It was a big shipping port where ships would come in. Still is today. <laughs> the president met the wagon at the White House. He picked up the prairie dog's cage. Is this a gopher? He asked. No, said the driver. I think it's a woodchuck. President Jefferson read the letter from Lewis. A soldier has named this creature a prairie dog. It lives on the western prairie and barks like a dog. And there they're exchanging the items. <laughs> the president gave the prairie dog a piece of apple. Chop! The prairie dog gobbled it right up. The president laughed. Americans will want to see this little fellow. He said, I will send these fine presents to Mr. Peel's museum. Hmm, Mr. Peel, that must be somebody who has a museum. Mr. Peel's museum was in Philadelphia. The prairie dog and the other gifts rode in a stage coach to the museum. It was a very bumpy ride. Mr. Peel loved the presents. He sent President Jefferson a thank you note. The prairie dog is a pleasing little animal. He is not at all dangerous like a groundhog, he wrote. Well, I guess if you keep him fed with plenty of apple slices, is he still eating apples? <laughs> Mr. Peel put the cage in a sunny room. Children came to see the prairie dog. Artists came to draw its picture. The visitors touched the buffalo skins and the deer horns. They stared at the magpies. The American West must be a wonderful place, they said. Wow, so I'm making a connection to the idea of in the early days of the United States that everything was about people exploring the West, settlers moving West, traveling West, like with Johnny Appleseed, right? that it was all about moving west to, they were expanding because people kept coming from Europe, right? Settlers kept coming from to the coast and there wasn't enough room. They needed some room, so they kept moving west. Remember I used to do that in the classroom with the map? Moving west. The west was wonderful. Lewis and Clark were gone for two years exploring it. In November of 1805, they finally reached the Pacific Ocean. They were heroes. If you travel west today, you can still see some of the sights Lewis and Clark saw. You can see grizzly bears and buffalo. You can see jackrabbits and magpies. And if you are lucky, you might even see a prairie dog. And this is one of those wonderful books that's really true about true stuff, right? So this is a true story. Lewis and Clark were real explorers. Mr. Peel was also an artist. He painted these pictures of Lewis and Clark and put them in his museum. And today that museum is called Independence Hall. So there are two painted portraits of Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, those two explorers. And 
I want to mention something now, you know, in this book, uh, Lewis and Clark are kind of the heroes, they're the main explorers, but in fact, there were uh, other people on the expedition that really helped them, and in fact, they couldn't have made it without Sacagawea, and I'm a little bit sad, I don't have uh, my Sacagawea book with me, usually I have a biography of Sacagawea that I share with the students, that I share with you guys, to really explain that while they were the leaders, and they had soldiers and scouts to get them through their trip, they really needed Sacagawea because she was Native American. She could speak the languages of the different Native American groups they met. Um, she even had her baby with her, so that was another interesting thing because to have a woman with a baby along with, with the soldiers made it safer for them to travel because the Native Americans who saw the group of explorers thought, oh, well, they've got a woman and a baby, so they must not be coming to do something bad. They're not here to attack us, so we won't attack them. We will maybe talk with them, trade with them, let them pass. So Sacagawea being involved with the trip was really important. Uh, so you might want to do some research on that yourself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about Lewis and Clark and the fun story about them finding a prairie dog and sending that back to President Thomas Jefferson. And I think that answered some of our questions. Actually, it didn't answer about the Louisiana purchase. It wasn't in the book, it, they already had, the United States had already purchased it. But it did talk about Lewis and Clark and Sacagawea. So I'll see you later this afternoon for our fun story.